Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I want to say welcome to yet another Sunday morning in which we are here to worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. Special welcome to um, the, the, the men from Teen Challenge who are here fellowshipping with us, and we will hear from them in a little while. Well, let's be standing for a call to worship, which will be taken from Psalm 91. Um, reading the first three verses. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and fortress, my God, and in Him I will trust. Surely He, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the, the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Here endeth the reading of God's holy word. May the church say, Amen. Amen. Uh, we are without the um, JPS power today, and so we don't have the benefit of the screen, but we're going to be singing a chorus. We're together again, just praising the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're together again, just praising the Lord. We are together again. Father, we want to thank you, Lord, because you're such a wonderful God. You continue to lift us up. You continue to just cover us, dear Lord. And Lord, without you, Lord, we are nothing. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just give you thanks, Lord, because of your blessings. You continue to just pour all those many blessings on us, dear Lord. Father, forgive us, dear Lord, where we have fallen short, where we have not done what we are supposed to do, or we have just be neglectful, dear Lord, to, to, to do in your work, dear Lord. So, Father, we bless you now, dear Lord, and we lift you up. Father, we want to remember the sick. And, Lord, we pray, dear Lord, that you may just continue your healing hands on all those that we know are sick, dear Lord. Remember Pastor Jackson, who is not well today, dear Lord. We pray for his healing touch, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We want a special prayer for those who are still struggling with COVID, dear Lord, because COVID is still around, dear Lord. Oh, Lord, we pray for their healing, dear Lord, and we pray that you made us wipe COVID from our, our land and from the entire world, dear Lord. Lord, we want to, to remember the people of Ukraine right now as they are under attack, dear Lord. And Lord, we pray for mercy and protection, dear Lord. We pray for even the ones who are causing the war, dear Lord, that their hearts may indeed be convicted and that they may realize and turn from their evil ways, dear Lord. Lord, we pray, dear Lord, for our country, Jamaica. Crime has gone down a bit, but it's still very high, dear Lord. We pray for all the men and women who are indeed plotting right now, dear Lord, and pray that you may indeed just convict them, that they may realize in the name of Jesus the path they are on is wrong dear lord in the name of jesus so father we pray dear lord that you continue to be with us we pray dear lord for all those who are on their way bring them here safely dear lord just help them dear lord just to reach safely and i pray for all who are here already that we may indeed have a heart of worship and a heart that's receptive to your word dear lord remember use it powerfully dear lord to challenge and I pray that at the end of the day, you may um, 
acceptable to you. So bless us now, Lord. And all our steps, I pray. In the prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
one more time. I love you, Lord, and I lift my hands, and I lift my hands to worship you, to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice.
No, no. 
They were there from me to all the bad things I did. So much so that eventually they shunned me, but they brought me back into Northern Union. I finally got into my head that something had to be done, so I went to them and told them that I needed help. They introduced me to Teen Challenge. Teen Challenge, as you know, is a faith-based institution for drug addiction. They teach you there, or they teach you to become disciples. Discipline in itself is something that they teach us, but they also teach us part of the reason that we are all here, and that is to glorify God. We are fed Christ and God in him daily. It has taught me a lot, very much so. I have this verse that I use when I am done at the art teacher at this teacher. It's 1 Corinthians 6, verse 20. For you are born to the Christ, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, for you belong to God. I know that every day with Psalm 19, verse 14, that is, asking the Lord to let the words of my mouth, the patience of my heart, be accepted in his sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, next, we'll have Brother Western Paul sharing his testimony. Brother Paul has completed the Teen Challenge program and is here with us as a apprentice, as we call it, and he helps us in the daily running of the program. So, we will show that in the program. Okay, we're going to the church. And one of my, my name is Western Boy from Manager Road, Kids from Eight. And for me, it's an honor to be in Waterhouse in Pentecost Church. Because in Waterhouse is synonymous with crime and reggae music and football. But in the house of worship, transcend them all. So it's really an honor to be in Waterhouse. But I must say, for me to be in this place to give my testimony, it's in itself a big testimony. Why is it a testimony? Before coming into the Teen Challenge program, I had a couple of kids and in the church where I was stealing from the church, where I was committing sacrilege, stealing from the church to satisfy a crack cocaine addiction that has prolonged for over two decades, conservatively two decades. What I must say about using crack cocaine, it brings on a new cycles. You have to eat your psychotic mind, insanity, and being in that stage, you are used by the devil. The devil had me beaten up. And during that time, I was shot on three different occasions. And the amount of time I was incarcerated and go for the courts and things, I honestly lost count of it. It was so many times. But then Charlie didn't go into the church and see it from the church. On the last occasion, it was like a Damascus who would experience that occasion because I was arrested and taken before the criminal court. But I said my mama my case in the criminal court and my case was transferred to the drug court. While crying in the church in the drug court, knew about the Teen Challenge program. And he said, Mr. Ford, I said it to a place that will facilitate you being in the church for Christ's purpose. And yet, the manifestation. We know something about it. What can I say about the, the Team Challenge program? You know, the mantra of Team Challenge is that Christ is the catalyst for change. It's a faith based program. And the program is geared in that direction. Christ in the morning, afternoon, in the evening. And I will say, because of that, I submitted myself and accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. <laughs> and now I can boldly embrace 2 Corinthians 5 17. Therefore, the man be Christ that you creation. The one thing that passed away and the old But as I mentioned, I 
coming, he will send for the Holy Spirit. And he said they are going to face problems, difficulties in life. But also, this is what he says here in verse 23. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth. My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive. And your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking purely today, a time is coming when I no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father, the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I'm leaving the world and going back to the Father. And because I am leaving the world and going back to the Father, in your prayers, as you come to the Father, you will pray in my name. In my name. Jesus Christ himself declared after his resurrection and before his ascension, he said in Luke 22, 24, verse 17, that repentance and forgiveness must be preached in his name to the world. He, that's what he said. Repentance and forgiveness must be preached in his name. In his name. Jesus' is name. What is there about the name? For us, we know that the name identifies who you are. A name identifies who you are. And Jesus is saying to his apostles, when you pray, when you when you ask in my name, when you pray in my name, understand. That you are identifying with my character. With the characteristics that I hold. And that is for you and me also. That when we come and we ask of God in the name of Jesus. We ask according to the characteristics and the character of Jesus Christ. What do we know of Jesus' character? We know that in him we have life. Huh? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says that I will give life to those who come unto me. Jesus Christ is life. <laughs> He's life. And we need to understand that when we come in the name of Jesus, we come representing life before God. And that's why we can draw from God. We can draw from God. The character of Jesus Christ represents truth. Yeah. The character of Jesus Christ represents holiness. So when we come and we say in the name of Jesus, we must look at Jesus Christ, the one through whom we are going to God. We must understand, and that's why we can't come to Jesus Christ in any, any, any way that we feel. So we pray. You're tired, you beat out. You don't come before God with reverence and honor. You don't come before Him to adore Him. And then you say a quick prayer in the name of Jesus and it's done. 
this age. A prayer like that does not represent the character of the one through whom we are praying. Through whom we are praying. So Jesus says, when you come, when you come to the Father, you pray and ask in my name. Because when you do that, I am the channel. I am the mediator. I am the one through whom your prayers will go to God the Father. And if it can come through me, <laughs> it will never reach the Father. It will never reach the Father. So there must be a recognition of the character of Jesus Christ through whom you are praying. There must be. If you can't recognize Jesus Christ, then there is no circumvention to go to God. There is no way to go to God. And that's why the world cannot go to God and have God doling out. Showing down his blessing upon them. No. Because you must understand that your prayer must be sincere, must be true. Your heart must, must be humble. You must recognize the person whom you are coming to. You must. You must. So Jesus Christ, my brothers and sisters, he says repentance and forgiveness must be preached. Jesus Christ must be preached as the one source through whom we must pray. There is no Allah. There is no Jarastafari. There is no Buddha. There is none of these and more that you can go to God through. God says, my son and only son, the Holy One, the Savior of the world. So when we come and we say the name of Jesus, understand who we are coming through. The person we are coming through, it's Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ. And right now, maybe we need to change our prayers. Maybe we need to change indeed that atmosphere that surrounds our prayer. That environment in which we come to God before God. Jesus Christ is the only representative that you and I have before Almighty God. Therefore, when we come up to God through Jesus Christ, we recognize our Savior and our God. But also, Jesus, when we come to Him, my brothers and sisters, and we pray in His name, we have access to the throne of God in the name of Jesus. We have access to the throne of God. Hebrews tells us, chapter 4, verse 16, it speaks to the boldness you and I have before Almighty God because we come in our Savior's name. We come through the one who has brought confidence to our cleansing that he has given unto us. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence. One who is filled with sin, one who is filled with fear cannot come to the throne of Almighty God with confidence. No, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We may find mercy and grace. God's favor will be upon us. Access to the truth. 
throne of Almighty God through the name of Jesus Christ. Through the name of Jesus Christ. And we must glorify God that we have a representative. We have a model through which we can go to God with confidence. Why? Because we have been cleansed. We have been washed. We have been sanctified. We are now called the children of Almighty God. And because we are children, we say our Father. Because we are children, we have become joint heirs with Christ. We have an inheritance in heaven. We have access to heaven. And we can go to God, the King of heaven. And we can, we can, we can ask of him. We can answer him. In your time of need. Huh? That's what the scripture says. In your time of need, we need the grace and the mercy of Almighty God. We need the grace of, of Almighty God and his mercy. We need God's favor. And don't we have needs? Who here does not have any need? Daily we have needs. And our needs are many. Are many. But because God's source will never be depleted, you and I can go to the livingness of Almighty God and we can get more and more from Almighty God and God is able. God is able. So in the name of Jesus Christ, we have access to the Father. We can petition Almighty God through Jesus Christ. Hebrews 7 verse 25 speaks to Jesus as our high priest. Huh? As a priest who did not have to go as the Aaronic order. But he says we can go and we can make petition to Almighty God through Jesus Christ. Hebrews 7 says, 25, Therefore, he is able to save completely those who came to God, who come to God through him, because he always lived to intercede for them. Jesus Christ, when we make our petition to him, through him, Jesus Christ talks to the Father. It's, 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 if, if only we could just capture the moment. It's a privilege. It is precious. It's a moment when you come in the presence of God. You're overwhelmed with the presence of God. And you know that you're in the presence of holiness. And something must happen to you. Something must take place in your life. In the name of Jesus, I come. In the name of Jesus, I have access. In the name of Jesus, there is an assurance that when I come to God through Jesus Christ, my prayers will be answered. It may be yes, it may be no, it may be wait, but hey, God is able, God will. God will. In John 14, we get that assurance. John 14, verse 13, and John 15, verse 16. That assurance is given in 14, 13. This is what Jesus said. And I will do whatsoever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. preacher, I have asked of God and I have not received it. But remember, 
God knows. And that's why God said no sometimes. That's why sometimes regularly you see the answer and God bring it about there. You say, praise God. And sometimes for years you pray. And you don't see it come through. And suddenly it came to you just like that. And you say, thanks be unto God. I've been praying for this long. I've been praying for this long. Jesus says, man, there's an assurance that there is an answer to your prayer. An answer to your prayer. And I thank God that he always answers prayer. Always. Always. That's why we can trust him, brothers and sisters. God is not a puppet that we use. That we pull every time we need something without reference, without consistency, without perseverance. God is not, he's not a vending machine or an ATM. You know, you put in your car, and you press in your figures, and you get some money. You get some money. Oh, some of us, we see God as that vending machine. But God is not. God is not. We must understand that when we come to God, we must come, what? We pray according to His will. Didn't we say we pray according to the character and characteristic of Jesus Christ? So any old prayers, my brothers and sisters, won't be answered. Won't be answered. In James chapter 4, 1 to 4, James had to correct and rebuke the church that he was writing to. Because things were happening. They were doing things and then praying at the same time and they could not get answers. Why? Because there was no God to answer their prayers. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? Hmm? You desire but do not have. So you kill. What do I mean literally or figuratively? With your mouth, you stand there, you gossip. You covet, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. You see what desire can drive us to? Instead of going to God, out of a quiet spirit and reverent heart, you go to God. You go and you try to get it yourself. You try and get it yourself. And so because of that envy, jealousy, and strife start taking place. But he said, no. The best thing you can do is ask of God. Verse 3. He says, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. That you may spend what you get on your pleasure. Let me call us some name. I'm going back to verse three. You the adulterous people. Now go back to verse four. You adulterous people. Don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, everyone who, who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. But he's saying the wrong motive that you and I pray with when we come in the name of Jesus is because of our friendship with the world. Because we wrap up with the world. Because we walk hand in hand with the world. We start doing the things of the world and we, we swear that what? Having the world in one hand and God in the next, we will get from both. God 
says you will never receive. Because when you ask of me, you ask so that you can with one motive, so that you can add to the things that you want. Go so to verse 3. You get your pleasure. Your pleasure. And that's why many of our prayers are not answered. We need to analyze and assess our heart, ourselves, when we come before God in the name of Jesus, what we are asking for. And if it is with wrong motive, you will not receive it. That's a big N-O. No. Because doesn't God love us? Isn't God a caring God? Doesn't God steer us away from evil? And if it is wrong motive, it means that Satan is in the mix. Satan is in the mix. And for many of us, Satan is in the mix. And God said, I can't give you. Instead, I will return the answer. I will return it. I will say no, so you can trust me some more. You can trust me some more. Jesus says, when you come in my name, I will give you the assurance that I will answer. I will answer. I will answer. So you and I are trying. We have a medium through which we can go. But the purity of our heart, of our motive, must be weighed. Must be weighed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we have authority. We have authority. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> we find Paul in Acts chapter 16. Paul in Acts chapter 16, verse 18. Remember the fortune teller? As they fall apart, this young girl that was filled with demons, she proclaimed these men are men of God. And they are preaching a way to salvation. <laughs> That's what she was saying. Not the way. Some versions say the way of salvation. What she there, they, she, she said they were preaching away. She kept, she kept this up. All right, let me, let me, let me go from verse 16. Permit me, verse 16. Once we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owner by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said, said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the Spirit left her. Hallelujah. We have authority in the name of Jesus. It's not the authority that we go about and we try to cast out demons out of everybody. No. Or I want to God that we would claim that authority to go everywhere and cast out demons. But Jesus said in Matthew 17, didn't we, when he came off the mountain, that this came, this comes through prayer and fasting. So you and I must be prepared. We must be prepared at our time to use that authority, to use that power in the name of Jesus in casting out demons. 
We must be prepared. And some demons doesn't come out readily. They don't come out readily. Sometimes it takes a few minutes. Sometimes hours. Sometimes days. Praying. Calling upon the name of Jesus. Praising at the same time. Glorifying God. That's, that's when we draw from heaven. Constantly. Constantly interceding. Constantly drawing from God's power. Because we know the power to cast out demons. We know the power. Demons are of the devil. And for every one of God's children, we have that authority. We have that authority that is available to us. I want you to know that. Brethren, I want you to know that. In the name of Jesus, you sing the chorus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we are the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee. For when we stand in the name of Jesus, tell me who can stand before us when we stand in the name of Jesus, we are Jesus himself. 
you must have a personal relationship with Jesus for yourself. You must know God's power that works within you. You must know God's power that cleanses and sets you free. You must. Not the Jesus that run on his bridge. But the Jesus that the power of God declared that through Jesus Christ, demons will flee. Demons will flee. He's a demon slayer and he remains a demon slayer. You and I, through the power of Jesus Christ, we do not walk alone. We do not walk alone. And we can call upon him any time of the day. So I fear must be, there must not be any fear. The devil bombard us every single day. We fight against and wrestle against what? Principalities and powers every single day. Every single moment. And some of us have become weak in our faith when the devil comes to come and bombard us. Talk about the devil oppressing me. So who yet talk about oppressing God? Huh? The devil is there to oppress you. He's there to thwart your purpose. He's there to oppose you. He's there to destroy the church. He's there for that purpose. But at the name of Jesus and the authority of Jesus and the power of Jesus, I cast you out. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Freedom. And I break that yoke upon your life today in the name of Jesus. I bind up that chain and break it in the name of Jesus. That you can leave this place free. Free. You came in your shackle. Can I release yourself? Can I move? But God has given us the authority. God has given us the authority. Claim the authority, church. Saints of God. Saints of God. In the name of Jesus. Save me. In the name of Jesus. 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 All demons move. In the name of Jesus. We don't need any demons. To come with anything that you are preaching a gospel. No, they oppose us, but we are invincible with Jesus Christ. We are invincible with Jesus Christ. We walk with Jesus, we talk with Jesus, we live with Jesus, we abide with Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, oh, what a, what a name! What a name! The sweetest name. I know. I know. I know. I know. In the name of Jesus. By that authority and that power, we cast out demons. But according to Acts chapter 3, healing comes also. Thanks be to God. Oh, Paul and John. Around Peter and John as they go to the temple. At the gate, beautiful, there is a man there who sits begging, begging. And as Peter and John pass, he begs hands. All right, let us go from verse 2. Now, a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful. We was put every day to bed from those going into the temple court. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get 
something from them. My brothers and sisters, try when somebody comes asking you for money, asking you for food, no, you're not going to turn them away. But what you're going to do is give them Jesus. Silver and gold I have little. <laughs> All right, but I will give you that money. But you know what? In the name of Jesus, I want to pray for you. I want to pray that healing come upon your life. I want to pray that life transformation will take place. I pray, I want to pray that a change will take place. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Yes, this $20 or this $50 that I'm going to give you will blow away quickly. But I want to pray for you. Will you allow me to pray for you? Silver and gold am I none? Peter John says, but such as I have, I give unto you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. When we are going to have to have we're going to have a 19 service here. We're going to have our fasting also. We're going to have prayer time. So I'm pushing up, I'll, 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 I'll push for that. I want one night, who want to pray for? Who want to call? Who want to call people before I want to God? Because we want change to take place. Something needs to take place. We need to take place. Life needs to, we need to be blessed. In the name of Jesus, healing takes place. And I'm certain many of us saints of God. Can't you put up your hands this morning and say, I have experienced that healing from Almighty God. I have experienced that healing from Almighty God. God has touched my life. God has changed my life. I am now a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things are passed away. And the old all things are made new in the name of Jesus. I have experienced that power. I have experienced that healing. I have experienced that deliverance. I am and you are. Let us not keep it to ourselves because God is alive. God is alive in our midst. God is alive in this place. God is alive in this church. Hallelujah. God is alive, man. You know, sir, but Dead Savior. So if you're dead, you need resurrection power. If you're dead in your spirit, you need the resurrection power. You need to come alive. And today is the day. Today is the day in the name of Jesus. Today is the day. It is the moment that it's all for. In the name of Jesus. Let our prayers be changed. Let it be changed in the name of Jesus. When we say the name of Jesus, let it not be an appendage. Let it not be something you just have patch on because it sounds good. No. But when I come in the name of Jesus, I come in the person of Jesus Christ. I come because I am assured and I have confidence that God will. God will in the name of Jesus. And when I move, I move in that authority. I move in that power in the name of Jesus. One last one. Yeah, we must give thanks in the name of Jesus. Ephesians 5, verse 20. When Christ has done it all for us, we need to be returned thanks. Because God is a good God. God is a good God. And He has done it over and over again for you and me. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus. 
we show gratitude, appreciation, love, thankfulness, because Jesus Christ has done it. God has done it through the Son. He has done it. Do you want release this morning? Do you want release today? Do you want the touch of Jesus Christ? Do you want Jesus Christ? I declare as the only Savior today. I declare as Jesus said that forgiveness and repentance must be preached in His name. He's the only one when you change, when you decide to change your life, to confess your sins, to get forgiveness, to water the baptism. You need to be baptized. You need to be saved. You need to know Jesus Christ personally. Not the Jesus. Not the Jesus of Paul, of anybody else here. But the Jesus you know personally. The one that all of us claim, yes, but we get it from the Lord of God. Come and do it personally. Come and do it for yourself. Let us all be standing. Let us all be standing. Because today, what about you? Where are you today? Where are you? You know that you need Jesus Christ. You know that your life needs that change. You know you need that transformation. You know you cannot sit still and do nothing. You have to move in order to know and to receive the power that Jesus Christ through his Holy Spirit has given us. I want to say, I want to speak to nobody's fault but mine. Yeah, that's all we know. I want to say, because if you leave this place and leave this place as you came, you will lose for it. You're the loser. You're the loser. But if you are not Jesus Christ, the baptistry is here. If you have been putting out baptism for a while, Today you can be baptized so that you can receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. This is the moment. This is the time. Come. 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 No.
It's time for you to praise God. Don't just sit there and say, yes, the change will come. I have changed, but start praising God. Let the crowd see and marvel. Let them see and marvel to know that God is living in you and you have been touched. You have been touched. No body is born but mine. Hallelujah. No body is born but mine. If I Your love extends towards all of us and it goes no bounds. 
we give you time for sitting in your sitting crash down and cross for a few hours. We need we don't um we're sacrificing we're with you right now. And it doesn't matter what is going on in the world, there is still hope because of your sacrifice. Thank you for everything in the sun's name. I pray. Thank you. 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 Thank you for everything that you are doing in my life. Thank you for everything um, that you have done and everything that you 
to do and as we go through this day, let us always reflect on your sacrifice and remember that we always have hope in the new Lord. And so it's supposed to be remembered. Amen.
Let us just give thanks to what has been received. Father, we bless your name. We thank you for your many blessings. We ask you to bless this offering, dear Lord. And I pray for every decision that is useful, dear Lord. It may be wisely unto your arm, to your Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to our announcements at this time. Um, our Bible reading will be from the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah um, 6 to 10. But us see, can you close those windows? I don't see the slides. Yes. All right. Nehemiah 6 to 10. All right. So instead of Bible study, this Wednesday, we will have um, a prayer and fasting, which will begin um, at 9.30 this, this week. So there will be no Bible study. And we're not unfortunately won't be able to stream it, but we will have um, between the hours of 9.30 and 2.30, we will have a time of praise, anointing, and, and, and just prayer to God. So we urge you all to come out. It's going to be a very wonderful fellowship. Continue to pray for those who are sick um, and those who have lost loved ones. Uh, we want to just um, remember our in gathering, it was up on the slide. It's coming in May, and for those of you who don't remember, basically we want you to start from now to start to either put aside an animal or to do some fundraising. So that I think it's in mid May, you can come and you say, This is what um, I have um, done for the Lord, and you give it the in gathering service. So it started and a number of persons have started already. And if you wish to um, have something, you can let us announce it as long as it's sold for the um, in gathering. Please remember to observe the protocols. Um, COVID is still around. We thank God that the numbers are going down, but it's still around. Um, Ladies Fellowship will have their their um, service starting tomorrow. What time is this, Sister Marie? At 7. All right, so Ladies Fellowship at 7. Please join the care group. There are still some groups that don't have, or, or some groups that still need to be formed. So please join the care group. You can see any of the leaders, and we will um, be with that. All week, the prayer tent, the prayer tent continues. Um, it won't be all week. It will be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, between 2 and 6. Between 2 and 6 p.m. So um, you can come and the tent will be up on Tuesdays to um, Thursdays um, between the hours of 2 to 6. And, and you can invite your neighbors to come and also be a part of it. Um, as we, as the government has relaxed um, the restrictions, we are looking to start a number of different things that we haven't been having. Um, things like our Sunday school, we hope to have that in a short, in, 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 in a little while. Um, things like our youth fellowship, and also things like christening and, and even special on a Sunday morning. All those things. So all of you who um, my song words, please prepare yourselves because we're going to be calling on you to give a special. I want to welcome um, our visitors here today. Um, can I just see the hands of all our visitors? Apart from the tea challenge, we're going to that manage them. All right. No first timers. All right. Um, just before we close, um, Two persons came forward, um, Brother Bolt and Sister Joy. Brother Bolt is giving thanks to God because he said God has just been good to him and merciful to him and his family, and he's just giving thanks. Also, we want to be praying for um, not Nicolai um, Horn. He has been rushed to, uh, to the hospital. He's a little. Um, Nick one, 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 Nick one,
Yes, he's the son of Nicholas. Alright, so um, please just um, pray for that little baby boy. Yes, I was saying that um, Sister Joyce um, wants to give a brief testimony. Sister Joyce, Yes, yes.
since March 2020. Here I go. This is the largest number of people you've seen. None of you are coming out for the first time. So glad to see you. Please come back. Don't be a stranger. Don't stay away. But and I just invite everybody as we continue to just um, we 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 join in our fellowship, amen? amen. Because fellowship with one another is great. Please continue to pray for Pastor Jackson. Um, he's not well. Let's cover him in prayer. Um, not anything life threatening, but he's a he's a he's a he's an asthma attack. But we just want to pray for our, our beloved Pastor. All right, let's just sing our dark songs, you know, as we close in prayer. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.